300,000 years ago, long before humans were walking around, were the Neanderthals. They were a species of human that lived across much of the modern Eurasian continent. Much of what first comes to mind when we think of them is wrong. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Who were the Neanderthals? Neanderthals, also spelled Neanderthal, have the scientific names Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. This name comes from where their remains were first found and scientifically described. That is the Neander Valley in Germany, which in German is Neanderthal or Neanderthal. Ironically, the Neander Valley was named after a German theologian and hymnist named Joachim Neander, whose last name means New Man. Most experts estimate the Neanderthals emerged around 400,000 years ago. Their remains have been found across much of Europe and into Central Asia, from Belgium in the north to the Mediterranean in the south. This area has a lot of limestone caves. Limestone is very good at preserving bone, even across tens of thousands of years. Because so many remains were found in caves, they got the nickname of cavemen. There were other pre-humans living in Asia and Africa around the same time called the Denisovans and Homo Hedelbergensis, respectively. Discovery The first Neanderthal fossils to be scientifically studied were discovered by some quarry workers in the Felkofer cave in the Neander Valley near Dusseldorf, Germany in 1856. They found most of a skull, but it was missing the face and several arm and leg bone fragments. The limbs were different from what you could expect to see on modern humans. Along with the newly discovered species were some remains from extinct animals and crude tools. It was hotly debated on what the bones actually were. Were they from some ancient human, or someone more modern, and they just presumed it was an ancient being because of what else was found? Or was it something else entirely, like a new species of human? Two more fossil skeletons were found a few decades later in Spy, Belgium in 1886. This brought more proof to the camp of people that believed this was a brand new species. Since that time, more than 200 individuals have been discovered. Of those, more than 70 are believed to be children or teenagers. The sites range from 200,000 years or more ago to 36,000 years ago. Scientists do believe that Neanderthals may have survived longer than that, especially on the Iberian Peninsula. There it is estimated that they may have lived as recently as 24,000 years ago. Going with the earlier date of 36,000 years ago, this puts them overlapping with Homo sapiens for about 10,000 years. Recent studies Neanderthals were also close enough genetically to early humans that they could have offspring. Physically, they were more similar than people might think. The first Homo sapiens were shaped differently than people are today to survive in their environment. They would have been pretty similar to Neanderthals but distinct enough that scientists can see a clear difference between the two when comparing samples. Interestingly, we know that humans aren't the only species that Neanderthals would have intermingled with. We have found fossils of individuals that were part Neanderthal and part Denisovan, another species of early human. In 2010, the entire Neanderthal genetic sequence was published by a paleogeneticist Van Pabo. He managed to sequence the DNA using three skeletons found in Croatia. Since then, scientists have begun conducting genetic tests on Neanderthal remains and comparing them to what they find in modern humans. It turns out that many Europeans carry about 2% Neanderthal nuclear DNA. Further studies on their genetics suggest that they lived in small groups of 10 to 30 individuals that were largely isolated from other groups. A Harvard geneticist named George Church believes that a Neanderthal clone could successfully be gestated in a human woman. He thinks it would be beneficial to do this because the Neanderthal and human mind are different. He thinks that the being would be able to solve problems that we can't. What were Neanderthals like? Through reconstructing their remains and genetic studies, scientists have been able to paint a pretty good picture of what the Neanderthals probably looked like. We think they had large eye and nasal openings and their eyebrows would have been further out than ours. The base of their skulls was rather large compared to humans and their legs were shorter in comparison to their arms. Generally, they had broader chests than humans. The average height for males was 5'5", 165 cm, and the average female height was 5, even 153 cm. Anything that depicts Neanderthals as hunchbacks with a Frankenstein-like gait is wrong. 
Experts once believed that they would have had a sort of in-between human and primate posture. Now though, scientists believed they would have stood upright and had straight spines. This misconception comes from an early reconstruction of a Neanderthal skeleton. It turns out that the individual had arthritis, giving him him alone, a bit of hunchback. The Neanderthals would have worn clothes and likely shoes too. For the most part, they lived in a colder climate than we do today. The clothes they had were made out of animal hides, probably loose and similar to a modern poncho. There is fossil evidence that suggests they could create threads and had a basic knowledge of weaving. They created art. To add to this, there are some cave paintings in modern-day Spain that have been traced back to before humans migrated to the area, meaning that they must have been made by Neanderthals. Paleontologists have also found what they believe to be a flute-like instrument at a site in Slovenia, but the idea that Neanderthals made music is highly controversial. Experts believe that Neanderthals would have been able to, and must have, developed a spoken word. From doing years of genetic studies, Scientists believe that Neanderthals possessed the gene that allowed for speech and language, but also the development of tools, the fact that they sometimes buried the dead, and the healthy members of a group cared for those that were sick or injured, all point towards them having communication through speech. What scientists don't know is what type of speech they would have had and if it would have been as large as the ones that the first humans had. Life and Death one of the ways that scientists try to get a feel for extinct species is to take a look at what they ate. Besides looking at the tartar on fossilized teeth and bone collagen, they have found fossilized fecal matter and analyzed it. What they found was that the Neanderthals didn't have one specific diet, but it was the land gave them. They had a varied diet that consisted of meat, fish, and plants. What each group ate would have depended on what was near them. Those near the sea would have primarily eaten aquatic animals, those in the forest would have had a diet of plants and small game, and those that lived on the Mediterranean steppes would have hunted and eaten large mammals. There is also reason to believe that they did not just scavenge for food, but that they also gathered plants as an early form of medicine. Both chamomile and yarrow have been found in the plaque on Neanderthal teeth. Those two flowers are known for their anti-inflammatory properties. There is also a decent amount of evidence that suggests Neanderthals nursed each other back to health if one got injured. For example, one Neanderthal fossil, named Nandy, lost an arm when he was young. He was also found to have two broken legs, partial blindness, hearing loss, and a degenerative disease. Experts believe he died between the ages of 30 to 4 to 5. There is no way that an individual with all of these issues could have survived on their own. He would have had to have had help from his community. When Neanderthals weren't able to heal their sick or injured group members, Experts believe that they would sometimes bury them. They think this because intentionally moved dirt looks different than dirt that has been displaced over time. There are also few marks from animal teeth on the fossils. If the body was left uncovered, it would have attracted predators who would have eaten the available meat. These bones are also in much better condition than those of the animals of the time. This is because they were protected from the elements. We don't know why they would have done this. Was it to mourn, or was it a part of some religious practice, or was it for a more practical purpose of keeping scavengers away from the surviving group? Whatever it was for, it has helped to preserve their remains for us to study today. Where did they go? Since most of the remains we found end around the start of the most recent glacial maximal, most scientists believe that they died out from the sudden shift in climate. This time period also saw more modern humans entering Europe. There wouldn't have been enough resources for both groups, especially during a time of extreme cold temperatures and higher sea level. The change in climate would have led to the plants they ate dying, and the animals they hunted migrating for warmer weather. The humans of the time had an even more diverse diet than the Neanderthals. They also, even at this time, had long-distance trade networks that other human species didn't. This is probably a big part of why humans survived through the new ice age and the Neanderthals did not. Sometimes you'll see people say that the humans hunted and killed off the Neanderthals, but very few experts actually believe that this happened. Skirmishes between the two groups probably did happen during this time of scarcity, but there is no evidence to suggest that there was any large-scale violence between the humans and Neanderthals. In addition to climate changes, some scientists believe that the early humans brought a disease with them that they were immune to and that the Neanderthals weren't and that this could be why so many died out so quickly. 
Which of these things was most surprising for you to learn? Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to follow for more crazy history facts.